Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Tammany Hall. This is sent to me by Pandasaurus Games, and is designed by Doug Eckhart. Tammany Hall is a game of backstabbing, corruption, temporary alliances, and taking power at all costs. You want to rule New York? You are going to need to play the city's growing immigrant populations against one another. Help immigrant groups to gain political favors, then call in those favors to slander your rivals and win election. The player who uses their power best will be elected mayor, but the mayor's grip on the city is tenuous at best. Take power, rule New York. Let me show you how to play. In Tammany Hall, you will use ward bosses and political favors to drum up votes for your campaign for mayor of New York City. There are four elections held throughout the game. During each election, you will score victory points for each individual ward where you win the most votes and for winning the most wards and being named mayor. At the end of the game, the player with the highest score wins. Now, the game is played over four terms, each of which is made up to four years. So you can see up here that word this is, it is divided into four different years up there. Each year, every player takes a turn. Uh, once everyone's taking a turn, you resolve the end of year phase. If it's the end of the four year term, you do an election. After the final election, the game ends and a winner is determined. So each turn, you do the following steps. First, you check Castle Garden and see if it's empty. If it's empty, you will draw cubes from this bag to refill it. Otherwise, in any order, you must take one ward action and you may take each available optional action once. So, in this case, yep, if this were empty, you would draw cubes uh, equal to the number of players plus two and put them there. Next, you resolve your actions. You must take one of two available ward actions. You can either campaign or settle. So let's go over those. Uh, but first, let's, let's go into some of the terminology here. Uh, active wards. A ward is considered active if there is at least one immigrant group cube there. These are immigrant cubes all over the board. So as you can see, all of these are active. Wards that have none are inactive. While a ward is inactive, it does not vote during elections, and you cannot place ward bosses there. New wards become uh, active at the end of elections. In a five-player game, they are all active from the start. But if you look up here, this tells you when certain wards uh, become active, depending on your player count. Once a ward is active, it can never be inactive, meaning every ward has to have at least one cube in it once it's active. Otherwise, so you can't move this out of here and make this one empty. When you place one of your ward bosses, you may place it in any active ward on the map. Your ward boss can be in the same ward as an opposing ward boss, and there is no limit to how many of these ward bosses you can have in any active ward. So here are your two options. First, you could campaign. Just take two of your ward bosses, place them in active ward. So I could be like, I'm gonna put one in this ward and this ward. That's one action you can do. The other action you could do instead of that is settle. Place one of your ward bosses in an active ward, then take an immigrant cube from Castle Garden, say this one, and you place it in any active ward. Uh, you receive one political favor from the immigrant population you place. So if I place a I, an Irish cube, let's say I place it here, uh, I then receive one political favor of that color. You can also choose to put for with the campaign action, two bosses in the same ward, like that. Um, so you, you don't, you're not limited to just uh, two, you can do one or two. And when you place the immigrant cubes with the settle action, you don't have to have a boss there to put them on there. You can put it anywhere. Political favors are given to you and they will help you perform well during elections. Each political favor you could earn can be spent in an active ward where there is at least one immigrant cube of that population. These can be used to gain votes or slander opposing ward bosses. Um, unspent political favors can also act as election tiebreakers and earn you points at the end of the game. And you cannot give or trade these to other players. Now, once term two, uh, now once term two starts, you unlock some new um, optional actions. One action you can do is slander, the other is office benefit. Uh, let's go into those. So, in each subsequent term, uh, you may slander an opponent once. You can choose any turn to do this as long as you did it only once per turn. To slander an opponent, you first choose an active ward where you have at least one boss, and then you spend one political favor that matches a population in that ward. Then, you remove one opposing boss from the ward. So, for example, let's say I had a ward boss. I'm orange player, I have a ward boss in 14. And I spend a Irish political favor because there's a green cube in here. Uh, I can then 
remove my opponent's boss from that ward. You can do this once per turn. After you make your initial slander, if there is an adjacent active ward where the same population, where the same opponent has a ward boss, and where you have at least one ward boss, you could spend two additional favors of that color to spread the slander. Uh, so let's let's show how that works. So let's say I've got one, I got red team has this and this. And what I could do is let's say I have some English political favors. Let's say I'm red player. I play one white uh, political token uh, or favorite token. I can remove this ward boss because I have a white cube here. Then if I have two more, uh, I can spread it to this adjacent ward. In this case, I have another ward boss here. I have a white cube and there's an opponent, that same opponent, I can remove another one. You can only spread each slander once uh, and you can only spread slander to an adjacent ward. After you've slandered your opponent, you discard one of your slander tokens to indicate that you have used your slander for the current turn. If you don't use these, they are worth one victory point at the end of the game. Another optional action you can do is use an office benefit, which are these over here. Now, uh, in the first term of the game, nobody has any of these. You only get these at the end of your first election. I'll explain how you get these uh, in a bit, but let's just go into what each of these roles can do as an optional action. The mayor, if you are elected, you receive three victory points and you choose which city office each other player receives. You are also a first player until the next election. So you get to distribute who gets what role. And so all of you, if you're playing with five players, you'll have a, each of you will have a role. Uh, with less, you won't use all the rules. Deputy mayor, uh, each turn you gain one political favor of any color. Chief of police, each turn you may remove one immigrant cube or any ward with at least two cubes. Council president, lockup. Up to two times per term, you may place a council president token on any ward that does not already have one. Once a token is placed on a ward, no one may add pieces to or remove pieces from that ward until the end of the next election. So, I place this down here. Now this ward is locked until the end of the, ne the, end of the next election. Um, it is, no one can remove bosses or add any cubes or do anything to it. And finally, the precinct chairman. Each turn you may move one immigrant cube of any color from any ward with at least two cubes to an adjacent active ward. Um, you don't gain a political favor for doing this. So I just uh, move cubes around. Once everyone has taken a turn, the year is over, uh, and then you move the year marker forward. Once we get to one of these, at the end there's an election. What happens then is you clear castle garden, you determine which player wins each ward, uh, then determine who has the most influence over the immigrant populations, then you score points for the wards you win, uh, and that person becomes, whoever has the most wards becomes mayor. So let's go through an election. First, like I said, you remove all the cubes from uh, Castle Garden, and then in each active ward on the map, you resolve a ward election to determine who secures that ward in the mayoral race. You always do it in order of these printed arrows here. So, let's put these here, for example. Each player first counts one vote for each ward boss. So, black and purple each have one. Then, each player with at least one boss present may secretly bid any number of political favors to increase their vote count. You can only bid favors if you have at least, match at least one cube in that ward. So, let's say the black player and the purple player bid. They secretly bid, then they reveal. Aha. Then in this case, black has two more votes, purple has one more vote, so it's three to two. Then whoever has the most votes uh, is the winner of the ward. All ward bosses are removed except for one belonging to the winning player. If there is a tie, no uh, winner is declared, and all the bosses are removed from the ward. So if they had used the same number of political favors, or used none, they both be removed. Once the election is decided, all political favors that were bid are discarded. There are four special awards that provide immediate benefits uh, to the players that win them. If you win this ward, you immediately get to place an immigrant cube anywhere in any active ward, and you can choose the color of the cube. So I could be like, mm, I'll put one here. This will let you take any political favor of any color if you win this election. So I, let's say I win this one, mm, I'll take a English uh, favor. Now what you do is you go through every single ward, counting up votes, 
doing the bidding to see where it's at. So I'm just gonna place them randomly as an example. So let's say after everything was said and done, this is what the board looked like with all the elections. Then you'll receive rewards based on how well you perform. The first step is to name an immigrant leader for each population. So starting with the Irish, each player counts the total number of Irish immigrant cubes in all wards they won. So in this case, orange player won three cubes. Uh, does anyone beat that? I don't think so. So in that case, the orange player uh, would receive three green political favors and they become the Irish immigrant leader. And you put a ward boss there. You repeat this for every single one. So for the English, looks like it would be, that would be a tie. I think every single player has one. If a tie occurs, then all tied players uh, share the status and receive three political favors. Then each player will score one victory point for each ward that they won, except ward 14 with Tammany Hall is worth two points. So wood grain player would have four points, orange would have two, three, four points, three for black, two for purple, two for red. And whoever won the most wards is named mayor. In that case, it's wood grain because they have four wards. To indicate their mayor, they take the mayor card. If there's ever a tie for mayor, that's when the uh, political favors come into play. Whoever has the most uh, total unspent political favor chips breaks a tie. Otherwise, uh, you go down tied player who is, has the most Irish uh, political favors, then English, then German, then Italian. Those are the tiebreakers for mayor. If there is still no winner, then the player who was mayor in the previous term gets to be mayor again. If there is no winner at the end of term one, no mayor is named, and so these rules are not given out. And then, like I said before, whoever is mayor will get three points, and then they get to choose what other what rules to give out to the other players. Then, depending on the number of players you have, if you're playing with three or four, um, new wards will open up. Again, with a five-player game, they're all already open, but in other games, Ward uh, 2 opens up for a three-player game after the first election. Ward 3 opens up for a four-player election or game and so on. Otherwise, you keep going through all 16 years, all four elections. And finally, at the end of term four, players hold the final election. It is resolved the same way, except the mayor does not appoint city offices at the end. After the final election is held, you score the following end game victory points. So besides the points you got for your wards and for your mayorships and stuff, you also get, at the end of the game, a political favor bonus. Each immigrant population will award two victory points to the player with the most unspent favors of its color. If there's a tie, all tied players earn the two points. And then, like I mentioned, each unused slander token at the end is also worth one victory point. Highest score is the winner. If there's a tie, you still use the, the election tiebreakers, so most unspent favors or most of each color and so on. And that's the game. You're just struggling to control areas uh, with votes, uh, slandering, doing all that tricky political shit, uh, and you want to try to get the most points, and that's the game. So I think this is a good example of a game where I think it's a good game. The design is quite good, actually, um, but I feel like it's not entirely for my tastes. The theme is a little dry for me, but I know for people who like historical themes, uh, this may resonate more with you. I appreciate that the rules are very simple to learn, even if what's going on can get, you know, more or complex and competitive. It's definitely a game, though, where if you're not careful, somebody can just start running off with the game from the get-go. And after a certain point, they can just become unstoppable. The game's enjoyment is also highly dependent on the group you're playing with, more so than I think other games. And a lot of board games, it doesn't really matter who you play with, you'll generally have a good time, I think. But with this game, you really need to make sure that you have the right people, because if people aren't willing to listen to negotiation or just won't listen to reason, they can fall apart. You can, you can, you can, you know, argue all you want, but if someone just can be like, mm, I don't want to listen to anything and just do whatever, it can be a tricky experience. Um, so this is definitely a game that is meant to be played over and over, and the ideal situation is where you have everyone who understands the game really well and is willing to enjoy a mean cutthroat experience and i enjoy cutthroat games 
but the gameplay has to be really fun for me to play them regularly. And again, while I do acknowledge that the design is very clean and solid in this, it doesn't grasp me theme-wise, um, and mechanics-wise, it's a little dry, I think. I mean, it's interesting playing this right after The King is Dead, which was my previous review, which both have very similar kind of, like, feels of, like, pushing cubes around and seeing what happens with, like, you know, taking different areas. But I think that game had, like, the fun card play that I really liked and the tension. And this was fun, but ultimately was kind of felt just very straight up just pushing cubes around and... Yeah? Yeah? What did you think of Tammany Hall? Huh? What did you think? Did you like it? Did you like it? What did you think? Oh, no, you didn't like it, huh? Okay. However, if you have a tight group of bastard friends that love arguing and politics, this will be a good fit for you. In fact, I'm sure that after I explain all the rules, you know if this is the game for you. And I do enjoy being mean in games, but with a game like this where it's so dependent on the exact right crowd and the right temperament of people, this one was overall a good experience for me, but not something where I was blown away. Uh, I think I get the feel of like the, you know, being mean and negotiating in, in other games and enjoy the gameplay in that more. Even though you would argue, you could argue that the game is more, gameplay is more pure and simplistic in this. Um, but I kind of wish there was a little more. But, you know, I still think the simplicity of the mechanics is a good thing. And, yeah, uh, you will know uh, if this is the game for you.